I still remember my old granny was saying that mad people don't get any disease. You know, I was thinking she is mad. <laughs> but now a study in the West has shown that so-called mad people, like, you know, schizophrenics and maniacs, etc., who were locked up in the olden days for 40 long years, did not even have a common cold. They did not have a common cold because a mad, so-called madman, which you and I think is mad, he thinks we are mad. <laughs> that man has no contact with his body at all. He is completely outside himself. So if you don't concentrate on your body, you don't get any disease. So they don't even get common cold. And that's a very great statement which has come from the Indian wisdom. Bandhugale, Olle Shabdhan Thelidhi Ramma. Hagagi Nanu, Illidhi Munchayinda. But I have been using this word ever since the beginning of my career. I don't know, I didn't know the significance of that word. But I always think each one of us, whoever you are, is an extension of me. Because that's really molecular biology. There's nothing new about it. So one doesn't have to really understand the word for that. Bandhugale. First of all, let me apologize for not having been able to be here with you yesterday. I was supposed to be here, but I was also supposed to be somewhere else. So <laughs> physically it is impossible to be in two places simultaneously. So I was in one place and missed another place. But I am here today. I was asking my guru, Karnik, Ganesh Karnik, as to why a, an ordinary person like me is in the literary festival. That's a yes. <laughs> but then he said, no, no, this is not literary festival as such. This is about Bharatiyata, which I love most. Because, you know, <laughs> our biggest problem in India was that our leaders for decades were RNIs. You know RNIs? Resident non-Indians. <laughs> they live here, but think of the West. That is why we, are, we have not progressed at all. You see, for example, I'll give you one example. Today you can practice acupuncture legally in New York. You can't practice Ayurveda in New York. Because Ayurveda was not patronized by our government at that time. Acupuncture is patronized by China from day one. So when the government patronizes it, everybody respects it. And here we are not, you know, it's only the last three years, the change of guard that Ayurveda has been heard. I mean, in the older days when I talked about Ayurveda, people used to abuse me. They used to say, you are an idiot, you don't know nothing. I used to admit that. One day I was lecturing in IIT Bombay and I was talking about some subject which was given to me. But incidentally, I mentioned that Ayurveda is a science. So at the end of the talk, one professor got up and said, I respected all that you said, but I lost all respect when you said Ayurveda is a science. Ayurveda is bullshit. It's hocus pocus, he said. And I answered him in one sentence. I said, I'm sorry that IIT Bombay has a professor who is so ignorant that he doesn't know Ayurveda science. Ayurveda is a holy science, I told him. <laughs> he kept quiet and didn't talk after that and everybody clapped. <laughs> Friends, let me tell you something. Indian thought, which was there, which is called Sanatana thinking, has been the basis of most scientific thinking in the West. I'll give you one example. For example, now, our young, what, young lady, handsome young lady, where is she? Smita huh? Shanoi. Very, very nice girl. <laughs> I like Shanois, and uh, Smita is a good name. Smita said, Bandhu is a very good word. Yes, I agree with her. No, but you will be surprised that I was, as a doctor, I'll tell you, most of our medical wisdom comes from the East, from Bharat not from the West. We always used to say that risk factors, if your blood pressure you will die early, if your blood sugar you will die early, etc. These risk factors have been proved to be non-existent. There's nothing called risk factor. But the Ayurveda says simply one thing, you treat everyone as a near and dear ones, you will be very healthy. And you will be surprised to know that there's a latest study, latest study which is ongoing still, it will be out next month which has been going on for 75 years, what's called the Harvard Alumni Study, which started in 1930 with the students of Harvard at that time, continuously monitored for 75 years. Many of them are dead, some of them are alive. But only three things came out as the important thing for uh, Ayurveda, I mean uh, health. A, I, I, this uh, smoking is bad. B, drinking is bad. C, love and friendship and camaraderie is your tonic for long life. 
No, nothing else, nothing else stands. And these are the three things which Ayurveda has been saying for donkey's years. And now the Western wisdom comes back to that. I still remember my old granny was saying that mad people don't get any disease. You know, I was thinking she is mad. <laughs> but now a study in the West has shown that so-called mad people like, you know, schizophrenics and maniacs, etc., who were locked up in the olden days for 40 long years, did not even have a common cold. They did not have a common cold because a mad, so-called madman, which you and I think is mad, he thinks we are mad. <laughs> that man has no contact with his body at all. He is completely outside himself. So if you don't concentrate on your body, you don't get any disease. So they don't even get common cold. And that's a very great statement which has come from the Indian wisdom. So in every field of uh, knowledge, Indian wisdom is the one thing that is the basis of real wisdom. But unfortunately what happens is, if you talk like this, in the, this, in the olden days they used to call me Aryo RSS. I said I didn't know what RSS was at those, those days. Now I know what RSS is because of Ganesh Karnik. <laughs> and I see otherwise they'll say, oh he is a saffron uh, brigade or whatever. That's the label you get. But I always believed in the truth and I always believed in, I was telling my friend in what Karl Popper once said, Karl Popper is a great thinker who was like a colossus strode on the London School of Economics for about 30 years in the 50s. He said, I quote, knowledge advances not by repeating known things but by refuting false dogmas. There are so many false dogmas in every area of wisdom that if you don't refute them, you don't go forwards at all. And what we do in our education, this she said, uh, what is that? Vidya Kshetra Dalli. Education is repeating the whole thing. What education have we inherited from the West? The first thing that the West wanted or the British wanted in India was to destroy our hoary educational system. That's the backbone of this country. That's the culture of this country. What is the culture? People think culture is dance, drama, yakshagana and all. That's not culture. Culture is what you do when nobody looks at you. Do you know what Indian culture is? You walk your talk. Not walking your talk like what they do in the television, going with him and talking, no. Walking your talk is doing what you say and saying what you do. And if you did that, you are an Indian. And that's exactly what the world is now trying to follow because that's the easiest way to survive in this world. So India has taught the world all that the world has to know and that's called the Bharatiya Vidya and Bharatiya Ta. That's all I want to tell you because beyond that I don't know anything about literature, lit fest, ex except that you light the fest, I don't know. So I try to lit the f light the fest. Thank you very much for uh, bearing with me and uh, I know what you will all say when you go home. I had a friend of mine who is a parish priest, was going from place to place lecturing. One day he came to Mangalore to lecture and his lecture was in TMFI Hall. And he, he was staying in a hotel called uh, Deeper Comforts. Being a Sunday, he wanted to write a letter to his wife. So he wrote the letter, came out, but he didn't know where the post office is. So he had a couple of kids on the roadside. He said, kids, can you show me the post office? They said, come on, sir, Sunday is a holiday for us. We will take you. So they walked him to the post office. He posted the letter. But being a priest, he said, no, I must do something for these children. Gratitude, you know. According to Bharatiyata, ingratitude is the greatest sin. And gratitude, he wanted to buy some chocolate. He went to the shop. But the valet was in the, in the room. So he told the children, don't worry, I have a lecture in the evening for which everybody has to pay 100 rupees to get in. But you two will get free entry. I will give you a note which you give to Ganesh Karnik, he will let you in free. <laughs> children laughed. He said, sir, what are you talking about? Then he said, do you know who I am? I am a priest. I am talking about way to heaven, way to God, where is God and things like that. Then the children laughed out, burst out laughing. Then he said, why are you laughing? No, sir, you don't, 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 get, you don't get angry. No, no, I never get angry because I am a priest. They laughed. Then they said, why are you laughing? And I said, we were wondering, a man who doesn't know the way to the post office, how does he know where to, where to? <laughs> so here is a man who is, doesn't know the way to the post office, trying to tell you about the way to heaven. Thank you very much. <laughs>